What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis and today we have the guide for how to farm the absolute crap out of the current Grandmaster Nightfall Warden of Nothing. And this is a very important week. That's because the brand new Nightfall weapon just introduced this season, the Wendigo GL3 Heavy Grenade Launcher is dropping. And this week, the last week of the entire season is the only time you can actually get the Adept version. So that's very important because Bungie confirmed next season with Lightfall, heavy grenade launchers are getting a huge damage boost. And the Wendigo has some incredible rolls. I mean, the very first drop I got has spike grenades, autoloading holster, and explosive light. And that's just scratching the surface of the incredible rolls this thing can get. So getting your hands on one before Lightfall is a great idea. So let's start here with three different recommended builds, one for each different class. Now the must know modifiers are firstly, all three different types of champions, so Unstop, Overload, and Barrier are present within this Grandmaster. Additionally, there's going to be Void and Solar Shields, and Acute Solar Burn is active. So, for my Titan here, I am gonna be using a Sunbreaker, I've got Hammer of Soul, then I've got uh, Rally Barricade for the faster recharge, Throwing Hammers, uh, Solar Grenades, I've got Roaring Flames as well as as Soul Invictus for my aspects, and my fragments are gonna be Ember of Singeing, Ember of Ashes, Ember of Searing, and Ember of Torches. Now, as for my weapons, the first one here is going to be the absolutely phenomenal Hung Jury SO4, the brand new one that was dropping from Grandmasters not too long ago. A rapid hit plus explosive is just incredible. This is going to also come with stunning recovery. So when I do stun those uh, overload champs, I get some health back, which is great. Then I'm gonna be using the explosive personality. Uh, this is a really, really good solar grenade launcher, autoloading holster plus Frenzy, and then one of the better origin traits, Land Tank, to give me increased damage resistance. And then on top of that, guys, I'm going to be using the Galahorn because we are using kind of a rocket DPS strats. You'll see what happens when we fight the boss. Moving on from my weapons here, uh, first of all, I'm using the Lorely Splendor Helm as my featured exotic armor piece. Uh, this is still good. Yes, it's been nerfed, but the ability to heal yourself and drop that barricade when you're wounded is so darn nice. And I have even more survivability with Well of Life here, so pick up a solar uh, well and start to heal. Then I've got my Unstoppable Grenade Launcher and Overload Scout Rifle here, along with Elemental Armaments for well production. I've got Seeking Wells here, so they come to me. Uh, then I've got Font of Might. I want to increase the damage of my Galahorn, my Grenade Launcher, so that's going to be great. And then lastly, I've got Weakened Clear, because I'm using a Grenade Launcher. This is like super great. And then Explosive Well. Maker. This is going to work with my grenades and my grenade launcher and technically my Galahorn too for more well production. And I had a free energy, so advanced scout is a perfect thing to like spend one energy on. Moving on from there, for the warlock here, we're of course going to be using well of radiance. Then we've got empowering rift, uh, snap, and fusion grenades. We're then using Icarus Dash and Touch of Flame as our aspects. We've got Ember of Searing, Ember of Solace, Ember of Wonder, and Ember of Torches. Now for the weapons, first of all, it's the Arbalest, okay? This is gonna deal with those barrier champions, arguably the best PVE exotic in the entire game, and also can deal with various different elemental shields because of Disruption Break. Then we've got the Doom of Chelchis here to deal with those void shields. Uh, this is going to have explosive payload plus frenzy, literally one of the best scout rifles in the game. Fantastic. And then we've got a roar of the bear rocket launcher. It's solar. Importantly, it has demolitionist here. Now that's really going to come in handy because this build is going to be a fusion grenade build thanks to the starfire protocol being the featured exotic armor piece. This gives you a second fusion grenade, uh, makes them more powerful with the aspect and then also is going to recharge them for doing weapon damage while empowered, hence the empowered rifts, okay? So 
During a damage phase, you can be reloading your rocket launcher because of Demolitionist every single time you throw a grenade. But moving on from there, guys, we also have Elemental Ordnance as our kind of main well production, obviously, because we have so many grenades. Then we have Seeking Wells. Uh, we then have Well of Life for more survivability, really important if you're running Empowering Rifts. And then we have Well of Ordnance for even more grenade energy when we pick up those wells. And then we do have a Lucian Finisher present here. Uh, that's gonna be really important for always having heavy, really good seasonal mod. And then we've got Bountiful Wells for more well production. We also have a special finisher. You may wanna consider this if you are running Arbalist as kind of your main way to deal with those barrier champions. Barriers are gonna be the most common throughout this strike. Now, moving on from there, guys, for our Hunter, we've got a Blade Barrage Hunter, Gambler's Dodge, Knife Trick, Healing Grenade for the survivability, and then Knock Him Down and On Your Mark as the Aspects, Ember of Ashes, Ember of Torches, Ember of Solace, Ember of Singeing, and Ember of Searing. Now, for the weapons, we have the Arbalist yet again for Barrier Champions, and then after that, we have the Xyuli's Bane for Unstop Hand Cannon. So, that's very important, guys. Each one of us, like looking at all the weapons combined, there's two different ways to deal with each kind of champion. It's not really possible for, you know, all three of us to run all three different ways to deal with champs. So that is definitely the spread you want. And the Xylus Bane is absolutely fantastic as a solar hand cannon explosive uh, plus incandescent ridiculous roll. And then we have the Hezen Vengeance, like another good solar rocket. You may have to to take out your vault here. Uh, this thing has, you know, impact casing. Overflow is an interesting one, plus a Vorpal weapon. And then guys, moving on from there, the featured exotic is actually gonna be the Star Eater Scales. So as you're picking up orbs of power, you're getting stacks and your super is gonna be increasing in damage. And then we have Energy Converter. So while you're charged with light, if you throw your grenade, it consumes all your charge with light stacks and gives you a bunch of super energy, up to like 50% of your super completely back Back if you have no super energy. Now, to really build around this, firstly, we've got supercharged here to give you two extra stacks of charge with light. Uh, then we actually have two harmonic siphons to produce orbs of power. And then importantly, we have taking charge. So you're making those orbs of power to get stacks with your star eaters. And also because of taking charge, that's what's getting you charged with light. And then moving on from there, guys, we have, of course, powerful friends for the extra mobility. And then lastly, we have charged up for one last additional a stack of charge with light and then Lucian finisher. So with this build here, the plan is use your blade barrage, which is gonna be absolutely devastating because of Star Eater scales. And then you just chuck a grenade and get 50% of your super back pretty much instantaneously as long as you have times five charged with light. And so you can use your extra powerful blade barrage a lot more often. But guys, moving on from there to some tips for the strike itself. So things are gonna start pretty normally. The first tip I have here is when you get to this section here, after you kill this barrier champion, I would highly recommend jumping up on top of the tracks as you can see me do, and then you can be completely safe. You don't have to worry about getting hit by trains. Yes, it takes a few seconds longer, but oh my goodness, is it ever safer. After that, guys, when you get to this section here, there's a lot of enemies here. You definitely want to go a little bit forward to this kind of curved piece of cover and use this as your main piece of cover. From here, you can kind of duck behind and be completely safe, but you can also engage both of the champions. Like there's one on the left, one on the right. There's also the Hydra that's shooting at you quite a bit as well. So just kind of take those guys out one at a time. And don't be afraid to use your rockets somewhat liberally as you can kind of see me do if you are incorporating those Lucian finishers to get heavy ammo back, remember. Now you really want to stay here and not jump over the train tracks until you've pretty much killed all of these enemies. Then you can like jump forward one uh, spot. This area here you can see me holding out is great. And the boss is going to spawn. As you can see, one blade barrage can kill that thing, which is kind of nuts. And then you're gonna continue forward. Things are gonna be pretty normal until you go up a shaft and then out to this open area. There is a ton of enemies here and like four different champions, potentially even five, you need to deal with at the same time. So really it's about prioritizing the champions. Definitely guys, the unstop 
and the overload need to be dealt with first. That's because those are the champions that are actually going to charge you. There's three different, so there is five, there's three different barrier champions, but they're all going to stay stationary. So you can use cover to completely avoid them while dealing with the other two champions, again, one after the other. Now, once those guys are dealt with, you want to then solely deal with the barrier champions. There's so many champions that I don't really think it's worth trying to get finishers on all of them. Honestly, just kill a few and then the last you know two or three you can try to go for the Lucian finisher for. After that guys you have the part where you have to defuse mines. Now the huge tip here guys is the first mine that appears A you actually may want to hold off on and that's because you have like a full minute to capture it and the clock actually stops when you're capturing it as well. However, the second you do complete A, B and C and a bunch of ads are going to spawn. So take it a little bit slower, don't capture A, kill the ads, especially the two champions that spawn. Once those guys are dealt with, then you hop on A with like 10 seconds left and you can then capture it and move on to B and C with less overall ads because you already killed them. Now, a huge other tip for B and C, there is going to be an overload champ that spawns here, but guys, you actually don't need to kill him. So with this guy specifically, as you can see, as long long as you do damage to him, so just shoot him a couple times, stun him, whatever, you can just leave him because as soon as you capture both B and C and those are done, a bunch of enemies are going to despawn and that includes this overload champ. And again, as long as you've done damage to this overload and it despawns, it will count as a kill and you will still get platinum rating at the end for killing all the champs. But moving on from there, capturing all of the different bombs are also going to spawn uh, this big bad boss right here. But just a couple of rockets can take this guy down pretty much instantaneously. And that's what you want to do. The second that boss dies, a bunch of ads are going to despawn. So you don't actually have to kill all those ads. Now, moving on from there, guys, you then have to interact uh, with the treasure right here. Now, you in the first time we did this, we apparently interacted with it wrong and the claim your treasure objective didn't update and uh, we missed out on our rewards. So definitely be careful about that. Make sure to do it very deliberately. And by the way, when you are doing the treasure, don't all stand next to each other. Only one person goes in, interacts with the uh, treasure and goes down first. If you jump down this together, you can actually bounce off each other and smack the wall and die. So again, one at a time going down here. Now, when you do get down here to the bottom. As you can see, there's a bunch of champions fighting in front of you, four in total, and you definitely want to, from this ledge, from this like perch, you want to kill a couple of them. Again, if you can prioritize the overload and unstop champions, those are the guys who are gonna charge at you if you jump down here. So kill those guys from afar and then jump down and try to get those Lucian finishers on the two barriers, and then you're gonna get your ammo ready for the boss. So the boss is gonna spawn, guys, and actually there's a bunch of enemies that spawn when the boss gets to about half health, but we're gonna completely ignore that because as you can see, that's why we're using rockets and Galahorn. You just absolutely empty all of your ammo. You put down that empowering rift or preferably a well and you go to town. And as you can see, you can melt this Grandmaster boss in no time so fast that no other enemies will spawn. And there you have your rewards and good luck farming that Wendigo guys. That is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more death Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.